We are recording. Okay. I now call this uh, employment committee meeting, police and committee employment meeting to, to order. And I'm going to turn it over to Philip at this time. Okay. Yeah. There's, uh, we would like for you to consider some action because we'd like to make a recommendation to town council uh, in regards to dispatching. Okay. The county board of supervisors, and I spoke with Ronnie. Uh, administrative aide this morning, Katie uh, Dion's wife, and she did indicate to me, and Ronnie indicated that they were going to vote last night to consider as part of the overall budget for the county what the new dispatching fees were going to be per town. Okay, they've kept with the per capita based on the number of people living in the town, just like they did last year. It was three dollars per person last year. This year, based on what was adopted. It is $5 per capita. And if you look at the chart that we've got, you'll see proposed dispatching fee. And I think that's not proposed anymore. I think that the Board of Supervisors has voted on it, that it would go up to $17,870 this year. We talked yesterday it was going to be six, five. They ultimately decided last night at the board meeting that it would go $5 per person. Okay. We've been talking about dispatching and what we're going to do and how we go about doing it. And it's my understanding, not only is the county dispatching the 911 calls, but the county has started, and I'm going to lean on you a little bit to make sure I'm saying this correctly, but the county is also now handling the fire department calls. Is that also correct? So right now, the dispatchers are handling only the police department calls, non-911 until and if the county turns them over to you. Um, that's all the town is handling. not handling fire anymore. And they're not having the initial 911 call. They may take it if the county transfers it to them, and they may take the call at that point. The county going up on their fees, we thought it was going to be $6, but it really is just $5. Okay? And so what we did, or what I did, is part of the budget deliberations, is I started thinking, and as a part of me being out of the office for almost two months, a month and a half, when I was sick, I started thinking about what are we going to do long term? One of the things that I believe is going to happen on or about the 1st of July is Janet Matthews will be retiring from the town service. And Janet now is kind of the brain and the nerve center of the bus system. She does the work order, purchase orders, kind of keep the guys from, um, the, the town employees from going up there and, and hanging out and trying to get things out that need to be out. Janet, we need the track code first, we need the backhoe first, and she prioritizes repair work. She'll be leaving the town. Her salary is reimbursed 50% by the town, or excuse me, by the state DRPT, which is the Department of Rail and Transport, uh, Transportation, which is what gives us money for the bus system. With her leaving, I think we have a unique opportunity because I don't think anybody wants to see either Barbara or Louise laid off. I think that is part of what has been uh, making us think twice about dispatching. Now that we're doing less dispatching because the fire is not there, with Janice's departure, we came up with a plan that I think will work. That plan would take Barbara Rothgib, who has approximately uh, six years or seven years, six plus years of time before she could retire, and putting her into Janet's position, transferring her laterally, no reduction in salary, no reduction in benefits, and having her work in that position. I think by all accounts, yesterday when I met with Barbara and Louise, I think Barbara was agreeable. I, don't, I didn't sense that that was going to be a problem for Barbara. Uh, the other position, and this, this is the part uh, where my being sick has really kind of made me start thinking a little bit more about making sure our jobs are cross-trained. Uh, Brenda has been with the town for over 40 years and has done an adequate job, certainly, uh, with her preparing utility bills, but at this point, she's the only person in the town of Blackstone who knows how to run a water and sewer bill, okay, an electric bill. And we make a living on water and sewer and electric. Everything else is really once a year. Those are the ones that are every month, other than garbage. And uh, we have a young lady, uh, Brittany, who works at the front counter now. Uh, I would like to take her and put her in a situation where she is going to assist Brenda by learning how to do the utility bills 
taking the phone calls during the daytime so that Brenda can get out of here. Brenda is racking up a lot of overtime because she's doing this stuff and she can't get her work done before eight hours is up during the day. Okay, we want to reduce that overtime and it is significant. So moving Brittany into that position and keeping her salary approximately the same, we may have to look at some adjusting. And in the meantime, Louise, and correct me if I'm wrong, has approximately a year left before she intends on retiring. And then moving Louise into that front counter position to work for approximately a year or until her retirement. No reduction in salary, no reduction in benefits. It's a lateral transfer. It may not be the same kind of work, but it is an offer of a job at the same salary and benefits. This is a net, and if you look at the bottom, Jennifer Hardy prepared this sheet. If you look at what it costs us for dispatching, in addition to $17,000 that the county's charging us, and if you go down and look, remember Barbara's position is only a 50% cost to the town. That's how it's in the black, quite frankly. If we were having to pay Barbara a full salary, then I don't think we would be in the black. And this would be a net $3,136.46 to the town in the black by making this move. And that would be a net additional one position. In addition, Janet has asked that after her retirement that she would like to work part-time for the town. We calculated two days a week into this calculation. These numbers are based on two eight-hour days during the course of a week. And I think it's a good idea. With Barbara being new and Josh Worrell being very new, I think it's a good thing. This also calculates, but does not include in that $3,000, that ultimately Janet's two, hour, two days a week would be 50% paid by the state. I'm not anticipating that in year one after our discussions yesterday. Perhaps in year two, and that would be some additional savings of about $5,900 in the event the state would do it. I think Janet talked to Andrew Riddle, who is kind of the contact person, DRPT, and I'm not sure because we've already submitted our budget for the year to them that they're ready to make a decision to pay half of that position. We would have to pay the full thing the first year, certainly, but we did not calculate that into that $3,100 net um, savings to the town. But I think the savings will increase in the event DRPT picks up half your salary for part-time work later, okay? Yes? Yes, but he said we can also take it out of the budget Okay, there you go. Then we may be able to even increase this $3,100, but this calculation is not based on at all the state paying any portion of her part-time work. So this is kind of a worst-case scenario, all right? I asked uh, or informed Louise that uh, we were going to be meeting today and that it was a public meeting and that she could assist with any additional comments. Um, I did tell Louise uh, we would certainly make an accommodation if she has some trouble sitting or standing and those kinds of things that we can find an appropriate chair uh, that will allow her to work at the front counter. Um, there was, uh, and I'll let Louise perhaps discuss it with you, and um, she has an option that she would proposed to me, um, and I discussed it a little bit with the chief. Would you like to present it yourself, or you, would you like me to do it? I think I know the answer. Okay. Hold on before you move. I just want to, I'm just being clear for me. Mm -hmm. So this is the total, and then this is the not away, mm -hmm. and then that is the savings between that. Because we still have these positions. Right. So mm -hmm. this and this, that's the savings. So then this is the total for these three and the part-time. Mm -hmm. And then overtime savings for Brenda. from Brenda. So this we would be in the plus. Is what in the saying. black. Okay. This because half of Barbara is fifteen, and the other half is fifteen. The state paying that. Okay. Okay. So that's not in the. So do y'all see that that's what he's talking about? With if with the proposed changes, the town would save. $3,136. And it would be a net, it would be a net one and a half additional positions. Half of Janet and Brittany working full time for the town. Okay. That we don't have that extra position over there now. Okay. This is why I think it's a unique opportunity that won't come along very often that we can get these kinds of things done and save that money on the dispatch center. Okay. We've been talking about the dispatch center. The dispatchers have been living with a cloud over their head for how many years? Four? Five? 
<laughs> at least that long. Um, are we going to keep it open or are we not? I think we have an opportunity to move these positions without reduction in salary and benefit and um, hopefully give them a, an enjoyable work environment that they can uh, certainly finish up one year of, of, of work. Louise presented me an option, and I told her we would leave it on the table, um, but I couldn't give her a commitment, and we'll present it to her. Um, you okay with me giving out these numbers and all this? Would you prefer not to? I will. Pref we won't talk about numbers, but uh, and we can perhaps talk about it in closed session because I do think that's an individual matter, um, and maybe we'll just leave it at that at the in the. And because we are going to go into closed session for dollars and cents for an individual employee, um, and we'll talk about that in closed session if, okay. if that's agreeable to you. Okay, agreeable to you? I'm satisfied that that would meet the, the uh, conditions of entering into closed session. Okay. I make a motion that we close this session. You have anything to add, Jen? You good? We accurate? Information good? Good deal. And you'll stick around for a few minutes? Yes, sir. Okay. okay, good deal. Okay. If you want to go, Janet? I think we're good. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All right. Quarter off. Fellas, just to let you know, I'm going to take the proposal. Uh,